Welcome back guys. So as soon as I saw these 10 Segrity tables going around, I knew I wanted to make one. But I wanted to make it a little different and take it to another level. So what I did is I put lights on the top, but I made it so there's no visible cords going down. So that, that way it looks like that as well as impossible, which is another thing that they're called is the impossible table. They're a pretty basic concept and I'm pretty sure you already know how they work, but if they don't, you can easily look it up. But I'm going to show you how I made one and how I made it a little bit different and in my opinion, a little more interesting. So let's get to it. I need something to stretch the wood around, to wrap it around, to give it a shape. This is too big. Too small. Dang kids left their bike out. Perfect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a tire off. All jokes aside, this bike was going to go to the dump anyways, so I grabbed it before it could get there. Now at first I was going to try to steam bend the wood, and I cut a strip and tried it out and it didn't work. And I, I left it in there for like four times longer than what they recommend. So I'm not exactly sure why it didn't work, if it's a type of wood or what. If you know, let me know down below but uh, I decided to change my mind and go with a laminate process. Here you can see our attempt and it, it failed pretty bad. It didn't even try to bend at all. So I cut some strips that were thinner and this is actually a salvaged wood from cutting some pieces for my sister. These are a lot more bendable right off the bat, so it should work good. So I got my little helper here, my daughter, and we start off by putting a piece of aluminum around here, or aluminum, your preference. I tried heating up with the torch, but it didn't really seem to do much. This is a pretty small torch, so it just worked out to bend it, clamp it down, and then we took and ran some screws in it to hold it on. Now I'm drilling a hole for the screw to hold it to the rim. And what are the chances that I line that up right where the valve stem was? So after reorientating it, we try it again. I spaced out the screws about every four inches or so. Now after my daughter picked the ones that she liked for the inside and the outside of the bent laminate, she took and she glued all of these up for me and then we can give it a try. Here I started off in the center, but that's not the way I recommend it. I kind of learned as I went. This is what it looked like once we had it all wrapped around it and glued up. So now we just gotta wait and I gotta do four more, or three more. So as you can see on this one, I'm starting on one end, working my way the other way. And this proved to be a lot better way of doing it. I'd also recommend that if you're gonna try this, make sure that you have a lot of clamps. I didn't even have enough clamps. So I sanded one side so that, that way it was nice and flush and that way I could cut the other side on the table saw. I wouldn't say this is the safest way to do this, but it seems safe enough as long as you took your time and were very careful about it and I was, I was pretty ready for any kickback that might have happened. So then I can trim the flat end down. That's going to be then that bolts onto the table. And I used a square to mark from the center of that flat spot up to the top. And that's where my string's going to go to keep the pressure in the center. And then I cut it off. So now when it comes to woodworking, I don't mind these imperfections. You know, they, they give a character and stuff. So I'm not going to try to hide it, but I took and I mixed up some glue with some sawdust. 
and I'm going to make it where people just don't see it as easy. Once that's done, we can take and sand all the sides and soften the corners a bit so that way it just looks a little nicer. So for the base, I'm going to use this solid aspen. This is sold at the big box stores, already wrapped. It's kind of expensive, but I had this laying around from something else I was going to use it for. It wasn't quite wide enough, so after cutting it on the table saw, I could take and glue the two ends together because I'm shooting for a two feet square on this. After the glue's dried and set, I can take and trim it down to its final size. And I decided to round off the corners. I thought it would give it a nice look to it. And then of course, back to sanding again. So with the one piece I cut off, I took and I cut this up into some smaller strips that I'm gonna use as a base. And I cut each of these on the corners at 45 degrees so they'd fit together nice and square, even though you don't really see them. So I measured out and drilled some holes in the base. And then I put a line from one hole to the other, and this is kind of a guide for me. So the hole is where the cable is going to go. So I took and I rounded off this edge so that that way the cable could fit through there without being at a 90 degree angle. So I pulled the cables through and I taped them down. Now I know you haven't seen the top being made yet, but I figured it was easier to tell the story this way. Now I applied some glue to the base and I put it in position where I wanted it put some weights on it so it could dry. So I wanted to round off the top too. So I just cut that off with the jigsaw as well. And then I sanded the corners so it would be nice and smooth transition. Then I started marking the top for where I'm gonna take and router in some grooves as well as where the cables are gonna go. I'm gonna reuse the jig from my previous video and I'm just gonna put a block on here that's gonna guide it along the way. So I'm going to route this channel all the way around it. I don't even think this part was necessary as if they were just flush. I don't think you'd see them anyways. And I did a little freehand routing so that, that way I could get this close to where the cables are going to be. But I didn't want to go all the way there just yet. took and drilled a hole in there and that's going to be a relief for the, the end of the cable and it connected them. So at first I wasn't going to clean this up because I figured nobody would see it but then I realized I'm recording it and a lot of people are going to see it. So now I needed four pieces of aluminum. These are going to hold the cable. Sometimes I get lazy on sawing them. And then I proceeded to drill a hole in the center for the cable. And then I drilled a hole at each corner and that's gonna screw it down. And then I also countersinked for those screw heads. So this is bicycle cable I'm using. What's nice is at the end of them, they have that ball so it'll lock right in there. So now we added the LED strip going all the way around. And we did also put some hot glue in here as I don't really trust the tape that comes with these. And here's how we managed to get around the corners. Once we got to the end, we cut it in the appropriate spot. Before I could move on though, I decided to take and put this uh, edging on. So I have this ribbon wire and I'm gonna use four pieces of it one for each of the wires that it needs to be attached to and then I'm going to run this each to a leg and you got to pay attention to where it goes so that, that way when it goes down to the bottom it matches up. 
and I glued these wires down as well as any contact areas. Now it does mean that these cables will be live, but it's only at 12 volts. So there's no danger in anybody getting harmed. Now I've seen a lot of videos where people make their hardware exposed and I really don't like that look. So I decided to hide mine underneath. These little white pieces I'm putting down, they're for hanging up pictures. I took and I drilled a hole for the LED sensor to go through as well as the wires for the outside LEDs. Now I'm sorry I wasn't keeping an eye on my SD card and it got full. So here's what's going on. I have the power coming in and then I ran that over to the other side where that powers the board. And then you can see the sensors ran out here along with the power going to the outside LEDs. And then the same power goes in here and then it goes to each one of the cables. And I am going to put a dab of solder on there when I'm done. From the cables, as you saw earlier, it goes to the top LEDs and lights those up. Now for the cables that actually hold it up, I had a few of these cables that came with some neon light fixtures. And the nice part is they came with these little screw tightener deals. So I drilled a hole through it, ran the cable through one of the laminate pieces, and then through the other one. And one of these laminate pieces is going to be the bottom, and the other one's going to be the top. Then I can put this, I'm going to call it a retainer, roughly in place and tighten it down. So now I didn't really want to fight with this thing much, so I took and I made these boards up. That'll hold it stable, so that, that way I can get all the cables in place and get it tightened up really easy. I just put four of them up and then I took and put a couple clamps on there and this, this worked amazing. Now with the height set, I can take and pull each one of these cables tight. By the way, the artwork in the background is from my son. And up at the top, I can take and put these cables through and cut them to length. And I secured these with these retainers as well. Now, as I tighten these, I kind of played the guitar, so to speak, with them until it sounded about as tight as I would like it. And then I just try to make sure that all four sounded the same. This method actually worked really well. I think I got just about all of my family involved in this project. All the credit for this bent laminate design, like the orientation of them working through each other like that, all goes to my daughter. And I don't know if you caught it there, but we were using a square to make sure that these were square. And we did a lot of measurements to make sure that they were the same on the top and the bottom. So now we need to flip it right side up. So this gives you an idea of how well that framing system I made worked. That we were able to move this around and not have to worry about it collapsing at all. But we were still really careful. So after removing the clamps, we took and we did make some fine tune adjustments to make the strings a little straighter and to get them the right tension. We removed the tape and then we took and uh, put on a little bit of mineral spirits. And then we took the supports off and this project is done. So I want to offer you guys a couple tips when it comes to doing this whole laminate wood because I didn't really find out a whole lot and there's a few things I learned on the way that would really help me out if I would have known it ahead of time. So the strap did help. It helped keep it from busting right here. More so than that, I think having an extra piece that you don't glue would be the best, which I did do on one of them and that one turned out by far better than the rest. The other thing that helped was on the other end. So. It did work out to start at this end and slowly clamp it going this way. But on this end, I took and I put a clamp and I didn't have it so tight that it couldn't bend at all, like it couldn't give, but it held it really nice and firm. And that really helped out to make it bend a lot easier and a lot better. Also, um, having a, a form where it actually has a backstop 
that would also help out immensely. So the thing with the bike, you know, it was quick, it was easy, but not necessarily ideal. All right, till next time.